time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are reviewing the neutral cards in the Lair of Dagon, the fifth Mythos pack in the Innsmouth Conspiracy Cycle. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Just a quick reminder of how we rate cards here on The Whisper in Darkness. The best of the best get an Elder Sign, while the worst of the worst get a Tentacle. And the cards in between get a plus one, zero, or Elder Thing, respectively. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing, and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these player card reviews. If you'd like to support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to Patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. Without further ado, let's get started. There are three neutral cards in this pack, the first of which being Favor of the Moon. It is a one-cost asset that costs one experience point. It has an intellect and combat skill icon, the Pact and Curse trait, fast, seal up to three curse tokens. If there are no tokens sealed on Favor of the Moon, discard it. As a response, when you would reveal a Chaos token from the Chaos Bag, exhaust Favor of the Moon. Resolve a token sealed here instead as if it were just revealed from the Chaos Bag, then gain one resource. We have been talking about uh, Favor of the Moon and Favor of the Sun since they were spoiled uh, way back when. And uh, they are finally here. Uh, your thoughts, Nate? These are the quintessential staples for the Curse and Blessed decks, respectively. Um, this one in particular is nice. The little extra resource buff is not um, not unnoticed, I think. You know, I, I think there are going to be a lot of times where you just need that like extra one or two resources. And the fact that this card not only pays for itself, but generates a couple of resources at such a cheap experience cost is, you know, really great. The fact that you can get both of these in your deck for two experience, so you can, you know, get uh, get those decks up and running very quickly is really nice. Uh, yeah, it's just a just a solid card for those for the curse deck. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've talked a lot about um, a lot of the the mystics. They need to. They have very specific token requirements and being able to have this on the table and uh, to draw a curse token whenever you need one uh, comes in uh, very, very handy indeed. And uh, uh, Seekers have several cards as well that uh, uh, their power depends on the number of curse tokens that you've drawn. So being able to play this with the gaze of Arach and just being able to say, okay, I have one, I have one curse token in my back pocket. Uh, this is, uh, you know, excellent. Uh, what? Uh, how would you rate this one? I'd give this one a plus one because any any deck that wants to add curse tokens and use curse tokens is immediately going to put this in their deck. Yeah, you don't think it's an elder sign in the curse deck? In the curse deck, definitely, but. Um... You know, I'm always skeptical of giving cards that are so, like, targeted towards one deck an Elder Sign. Yeah, so it is I It is I'm... pretty conditional. I mean, you, you do have to be playing the Curse deck, and you do have to have the Curse tokens in the bag. In the bag already, yeah. Before so. you can actually use this one. And, and ideally, you probably want to seal the three, the three Curse tokens, if you can, if you can. I don't think you're sealing anything less than that because even if you have no plans on using those tokens, at least you're keeping them out of the bag where they're going to potentially hurt you. So, uh, uh, yeah, I think plus one is is I mean it's it's pretty clear that if you're playing a curse deck that wants curse tokens, having them on demand is is about as good as you can get. And uh, and so this one is a and it's incredibly cheap. Like one experience point is. Is very easy to slot into uh, into your XP budget when you're when you're building a deck. The second uh, neutral card in the pack is Favor of the Sun. It is a two cost asset that costs one experience point, willpower and agility skill icons, pact and blessed traits, fast seal up to three uh, blessed tokens. If there are no tokens sealed on Favor of the Sun, discard it. As a response, when you reveal a Chaos token from the Chaos Bag, Exhaust Favor of the Sun, resolve a token sealed here instead as if it were just revealed from the Chaos Bag. This is the uh, the blessed version of Favor of the Moon. Slightly more expensive and no 
and no side benefit of the resource generation. But uh, but again, if you need a bless token, this is your ticket. Yeah, this is great with the recently updated um, Winchester that allows you to deal additional damage with Bless Tokens. So this is a great way to ensure that you're dealing that additional damage with that card, which makes that a lot more playable. And like you said, like you don't get an additional benefit, but if you're drawing a Bless Token, you're passing that test. So there is that. Um, yeah, you know, like, like we've been saying, if you're going to play a Bless deck, you're going to play this card and it's cheap to include in your deck yeah yep. so plus one for this one too oh definitely and another thing that we haven't mentioned too is that these are fast too so they don't even cost you an action to play so yeah 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 just you know benefits all around and uh, yeah you don't really need an additional benefit with this one when you're already getting plus uh plus two on the test so uh of course, you do have to draw another token, which you could draw an auto fail, theoretically, but uh, uh, it's not without uh, risk at all. But yeah, uh, another plus one. And I really like the art on this one too. The uh, mm. they they did a lot of uh, uh, Maricela. Maricela did a lot of intricate work on the uh, on the sun itself, which is uh, which is quite nice. The final uh, card in the pack is Purifying Corruption. It's a four cost asset that costs four experience points. It has a wild skill icon, ritual, blessed, and curse traits. Response, when you draw a non-weakness treachery, take one damage and one horror, cancel that card's revelation effect, and place one resource on this card as corruption. If this card has three or more corruption, remove it from the game. As a free triggered ability, you can draw the top card of the encounter deck to either heal one damage and one horror or remove one corruption from this card. This was uh, another one of the cards that was designed uh, by the uh, at uh, Arkham Knights 2019. This one is very interesting, Nate. It is. It's hard to evaluate. You know, a lot of the times, encounter cards will just deal you a damage and a horror. So it's like, do I just take it on the chin, or do I do I use this card to try to prevent like? something like a rotting remains from dealing three horror to me uh yeah, it's really fascinating the fact that you can also heal damage with it by drawing encounter cards could be useful like say late in the game you just need to heal one damage or a horror to be able to like do one particular action and then win the game i don't know this is hard to evaluate because it's expensive you know so it's like when are you when are you going to be playing this card and are you really getting that much benefit out of it i think a like the first investigator that jumps out to mind to me is calvin when he can you know he wants to take damage and horror so a card like this is really good for him because he can kind of tread the line that he wants to tread mm -hmm. but i think apart from that i can't really think of an investigator i'd want to include this card with yeah, I think it's it's worth noting that this is the only neutral option to cancel a treachery card at the moment. So unless you're playing a mystic and to a lesser extent uh, seekers, um, your options to tra to cancel treachery cards are very very limited. Um, uh, guardians have a couple that interact with treachery cards, but they don't cancel them uh, so much as you know change the way they're resolved. So this is the only neutral option if you want to cancel treachery cards. And, you know, it's nice that the damage and horror is not direct damage or horror. So you can pawn it off on, on your allies, which could be very nice for an investigator like Tommy who wants to defeat his allies. So, you know, throwing a damage and a horror on an ally for him is basically generating two resources. So that helps sort of mitigate the, the cost of this card as well as canceling a treachery that could potentially hurt him now taking a damage in a horror is not ideal a lot of the time and and most of the time you're right you know you're only going to take very minimal damage or horror but i think you know playing having played a lot of low willpower rogues uh in the past this sort of card is very very tempting for dealing with uh cards like rotting remains and um 
uh, frozen in fear and stuff like that where I think I would gladly trade a damage and a horror if I could cancel a frozen in fear and not have to try to pass that willpower skill test or just take three horror to the face because I've drawn rotting remains. Having played uh, Winifred recently through uh, Return to the Forgotten Age and just drawing so many willpower treacheries that you just you're you're helpless against right like in the in the my untamed wilds game like voice of the jungle first turn it's just like i'm going to be taking a horror turn unless i explore and you know it's like okay well i'll take a damage and a horror now to to cancel that and not have to worry about it for the rest of the game so i think this is a card that rogues could uh could definitely uh get some leverage out of and i mean the ability to heal one damage and one horror as a fast action as a fast free triggered ability is pretty there aren't many cards that let you do that um i can't you know most of them take an action to play an action to to trigger and this one you need any, and there's no limit right this thing doesn't exhaust so you can just how many how many damage and horror do you need to heal well you can do it in one turn as long as you're willing to take as many encounter cards as and who knows maybe you're willing to do that if you just need to get through one phase i'd maybe draw one or two encounter cards for that that i think the biggest and the other thing i noted here is that you know roland could use this to fish for enemies too if he was mm. if he was uh so inclined you know it's like okay i need an enemy well i might as well heal a damage and a horror and draw an encounter card and see if i can't um, get an enemy out of the deal to trigger my to trigger his response i don't think you ever use this to deal with corruption that to me doesn't seem particularly useful to me like i would sort of just see this as like you're canceling three treacheries and that's pretty much all you need for a game i don't think i'd bother with the corruption part for me the biggest issue with this card is the cost like yeah that's that's my issue with this card both in terms yeah. of of the xp so you're going to be paying four to eight for it which is it's a pretty significant commitment and then of course four resources is is steep especially yeah. in maybe you know rogues could probably get away with it um pretty pretty easily i mean if you're playing preston this is basically one turn of family inheritance so that's not a big deal but you know for a guardian like roland who's got a lot of other expensive assets to play fitting this in might be uh might be difficult but it's it's tempting it's very tempting yeah it's very strong you know like like we were saying this is a a really good way of dealing with certain threats out of the encounter deck um you know, if you're able to like play this with an investigator like Gloria who can manipulate the encounter deck, then you know, then it could be really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Um what would you rate this card? Because I'm interested to see. Oh man. I think I think I'm gonna go with a zero, uh, just because I think it's it's really it's strong, but I feel like the cost holds it back from from being any higher. I just when I sit down and, and I'm thinking about purchasing cards for my deck, that for for XP for resource cost is is going to be a, a a big factor in that. Um, then again, you know there aren't many neutral. There are no other neutral ways to cancel treacheries, and canceling treacheries is a very powerful effect. So, man, if this was just slightly cheaper this immediately jumps up to a plus one for me but i think at the at its current cost point it's just a bit too much yeah i think this is a really tough card to balance right if you make this too cheap then it's way too powerful like we saw with a watchful piece but you know as it stands now it's it's very strong but it's probably too expensive so i'm going to agree with you i'm going to give it a zero as well for for very similar reasons yeah, While it is very strong, it's just tough, like, to play, you know. What does Roland do? Does he play his 45 automatic, or does he play this and hope to, you know, hope to cancel that Rotting Remains? 
Yeah, we. I mean, and again, here's another card that sort of we've seen several cards this pack that that sort of play with the fundamentals of the game. You know, we had uh, Ikiak that cancels basic weaknesses. We had a Watchful Piece, which basically lets you skip the Mythos phase. And now we've got this one that sort of messes with the color pie a little bit more than, uh, you know, considering that Treachery Cancellation has been really sort of a survive. Well, Survivors have some as well. So Survivors, Mystics, uh, are probably the two that have easiest access and then um, seekers can get some as well but this this makes it available to everybody so again yeah like you say it's it's tough to balance it without if you make it too cheap then everybody plays this card you make it too expensive nobody plays it and i don't know maybe at three it would have been okay like three to me seems to be the break point for me when I look at costs and anything above three sort of really is difficult to justify. Yeah, and it's tough because it's like, is three resources or three experience enough to push it over to the edge of like borderline staple material? It's tough to say. Yeah. So yeah, this one gets a this one gets a zero, and uh, but I'll be I think there there may be a rogue deck in in my future that includes this just uh, just to see if it can deal like rogues rogues you can work around their low willpower and a card like this would really help immensely um, to deal with some of those those treacheries even for a damage and a horror. That's going to do it for the neutral cards in uh, the Lair of Dagon. Favor of the Moon and Favor of the Sun. Uh, Nate and I have been talking about these for, it seems, every pack since they were spoiled. Uh, just saying, you know, just wait. The the Curse and Bless mechanic is really going to sing once uh, Favor of the Moon and Favor of the Sun arrive. And I think that these are going to be included in pretty much every Bless and Curse deck uh, under the sun. Uh, because they are being able to draw the tokens on uh, on demand is uh, fantastic, and purifying corruption it's a very it's a tough one to rate. It's I the power is certainly there. It's just uh, the price tag maybe a little bit more than uh, than investigators are willing to uh, to pay. So what do you think about this pack uh, overall, Nate? Ooh man, this has to be. One of the most tumultuous packs I think we've seen in the game's history. Would you do you think that's a a safe thing to say? Yeah, it uh, it swings from from high to uh, to low uh, all over the place. And I mean, there's a lot of like we said, there's a lot of cards in here that are playing with the fundamentals of the game. Um, you know, it's. I'm I'm not necessarily in favor of uh, certainly not of watchful peace. Uh, Ikiak is a pretty toned down compared to what she does is pretty toned down compared to that. But yeah, it's a it's a very um, swingy pack. You know, you have all the the rest of the talents which we sort of knew we were going to get at some point. I don't know if it was you know, if it's ideal to just stuff them all in one pack and get rid of them because we know they're going to come at some point and they're not exciting, but we're going to make them anyway just because to fill out the, the thing. And then you've got something like a watchful piece, which personally, I don't think it should ever have been printed. And then you've got flu to the outer gods, which I mean, eight experience points, but man, what are you getting for it? Like, it just it makes me feel like I've missed some some combo in there that is just game destroying i mean why it would cost eight and watchful peace would cost <laughs> cost three is uh i don't know skipping an entire mythos phase seems pretty damn good <laughs> for three xp yeah this pack is all over the place you know we have even just some like nice like i would say just tame cards like enchant weapon and stygian eye like these are cards that you would want to include in the decks that you you know you feel like you'd need them in but yeah man oh man what a weird pack but i think i think for me the biggest takeaway from this pack is that the developers are certainly willing to 
you know, turn all the knobs to 11 and see what happens. And I don't know if I like that so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, I mean, the game is going to be celebrating its fifth anniversary, I believe later this year. And, and I know we've, we've heard from uh, MJ Newman that uh, the designers are, have all sorts of zany ideas that they want to explore. And, and I'm not sure while I'm I'm very open uh, to them to uh, you know exploring new design space, I'm not sure they should be tinkering with the fundamentals so much. Uh, I I don't think that's an area that is uh, they should be exploring, but that's just me. So I gotta ask, man, from Lang, before we close off, what's your favorite card from the pack? What's my favorite card from the pack? Um. Just running through, running through the cards in my head. Uh, I think it would probably just from a from a card I'm excited about trying. It would probably be Gaius, uh, just because I think there's a lot of interesting things to do there. I mean, Favor of the Moon and Favor of the Sun. I mean, I, I quite like those cards, but they've been known for so long that there's no real surprise there. Gaius. Uh, was pretty interesting when it uh, when I saw the spoiler for it uh, released. I think it was like a month ago when the pack started to circulate. And uh, again, it's an interesting card to build around. And how about you? Yeah, I'm actually right there with you. I like Gaius quite a lot. Um, you know, I'm that combo player at the table when I play in multiplayer. So you know, cards like this always really fascinate me. But now I'm kind of curious because you've been mentioning Preston quite a bit in this episode. So I'm really looking to now make a Preston Gius Dark Horse thing deck. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it'll be yet. I, I but... think that's a good name for the deck on Arkham D Arkham DB. <laughs> a Preston Gius Dark Horse thing deck. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be very, very clear <laughs> what it what it does from the uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the other card I, I'm very interested in trying is Purifying Corruption, just because I think it does have. It might be the card that solves some of the rogue issues that that I run into from time to time. There are other workarounds to the low willpower issue, but having just played Winifred and taken a ton of willpower treacheries to the face, uh, having some way of dealing with that it would be would be very welcome. That's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.